Hi everyone, Dennis Foley from Acoustic Fields. The so title of our video today is Live With What? I get, I get a lot of people when we talk on the phone and they're like, well, I guess I'll just have to live with it. And I'm like, live with what? And it's usually a pressure or a reflection issue because all small rooms have pressure and reflection issues. That's it. That's the way things go, right? It's the physics of small rooms. So what's the goal? Our goal is really to reduce the amplitude or strength of both. We're gonna slow that time signature of that reflection down, and we're gonna reduce the modal pressure. The room only sees energy, so we have to get in its domain. We have to start thinking like it does if we're gonna treat it correctly. Empathy, of, acoustical empathy, how's that? We have peaks in response. We all know that traditional small room curve, right? Boom, up here, up here, and then all the way down, slide 70 to 80. So we got plus, plus 10 here, 40, 50, 60 hertz, 30. Big peaks here. We know that peaks, give us more than we want, and then this dip here gives us less. Not only less, but, and this, this is not a roller coaster your music and voice want to ride on, okay? This is not something that's suitable to them. They like a little bit of more consistency here. So, you got to know what you can treat, what your budget will allow, and what you're going to live with. And you can calculate and determine all that. And then I can help you put more of a subjective twist on it, meaning like, oh, your bass will sound like this, or your mids will sound like this, or whatever. I can help relate the technical part of it to what you actually would hear and could identify with. We all got that one or two pieces that we use to demonstrate our room. Why do we do that? Well, because it sounds the best. Now, there's a reason for that. It probably sounds the best because it excites the least of amount of room modal issues. Okay? So it's not necessarily <laughs> a magical source. It just has a frequency range that's more compatible with the frequency response of the room. Okay? So we got to, how do we get through all this? nightmare and, and this shuffling around. We got to develop a strategy. Know what you can treat, know what you can afford, know what you have space for, know what you're doing in the room. All those variables have to be satisfied, all right, because it's important because every one of these creates a synergy and your goal obviously is to get enough synergy and enough energy going to solve the problem. Sometimes you can't. But that's okay too. At least you know what you can treat and what you can't treat. Then, can you live with those issues? Once you know what the room is going to sound like before the treatment, and then even after treatment, considering you know budget, space, and your usage, can you live with that? Can you live with a muddy and a sloppy low end? Can you live with a mid and, and upper end frequency that's, that's too hot, too lively? It hurts your ears, okay? Can you live with those? Some people can, some people can't. Everybody's different. That's the point. Now, if you can't live with the issues, you got to get a new room. Bigger, more volume. Still going to have the same problems. We'll just have less of them. So maybe with less issues, bigger room, more space to treat, we'll be in better shape. I don't know. It all boils down to the budget. Getting a bigger room isn't going to reduce your treatment costs. It'll increase your treatment costs up to points. There's break points. People say, well, I'll get a larger room. I'll need less treatment. Not necessarily. Everything's related, remember? It's not. Whenever you see something in acoustics that's this linear straight line path to easy, forget about it. Nothing's easy, not in acoustics, okay? Strategy, strategy, strategy. Know what we have, know what we can treat, 
And here's the rough part. Know what we can live with. Because the last thing you want to do, and I tell this with my barrier people with the noise, the last thing you want to do is spend any $1 more than you have to to achieve your strategy because you're not getting the value. You could put the money somewhere else. So strat, excuse me, strategy, strategy, strategy. That's what we got to have. And then at the end, when we flush it all out, you're going to see what's left. And then we got to decide, can we live with it? Okay, if we can, great. At least we know what we have to work around and what we have to work around when we're listening or mixing. Live with what? Let's find out. Hope this helps. Thank you. Thank you for watching this video. And if you liked it, please give us a thumbs up. We also have a newsletter that you can subscribe to. So please do that because we offer special price discounts to only those on our newsletter. And then don't forget about our forum. We have started a forum on our own website where people ask questions and I usually get a chance every couple of days to look at it. There's an interchange between people on the forum and we'll give you real answers uh, on a regular basis. So that'll help you. Thank you.